Our next presenter is Tom Nesmith from the Department of History at the University of Manitoba. Thomas Nesmith has made a significant new contribution to scholarship by leading the transformation of the study of archives from a marginal academic subject into a body of complex theoretical conceptualizations that form a new basis for university-level professional education for archivists. In doing so, he has had a major influence on international and archival scholarship and shown how society's central concerns are being shaped by archives as never before. Good day, everyone. I'd like to begin with the University of Manitoba Indigenous Land Acknowledgement. University of Manitoba campuses are located on original lands of the Anishinaabe Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories, we acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. The creation of records is one of the most important human activities, given the extraordinary time, thought, and resources we devote to it in daily living, and our dependence on massive amounts of records to understand our world. These records are the purview of archives, such as the Archives of Manitoba and its Hudson's Bay Company archives, which is on the UNESCO Memory of the World Register as one of the most significant in the world, and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's archives at the University of Manitoba. Records hold society's most extensive body of information and pose a little understood challenge. What should be archived? Why and how? I developed a graduate program for student archivists based on new thinking about the impact of archivists' responses. Far from stereotypically tending mere dusty shelves, archivists' responses create knowledge that shapes society. This insight informs the archival turn in many disciplines and prompts new awareness that we are living archivally, our daily life shaped by archiving. In Canada, archivists were the first to take the archival turn. In the 1970s, the new Association of Canadian Archivists founded Archivaria to make the study of archiving the new basis of archivists' work. It may seem odd, but that had not been done before by Canadian archivists and rarely elsewhere. The most important current Canadian example of the archival turn is the centrality of archives to Indigenous rights and renaissance. The TRC critiqued the Euro-Canadian archives about residential schools to establish an Indigenous one. And Jeremy Dutcher exemplifies this cultural renaissance in music he wrote based on century-old recordings of Indigenous songs. Use of archives and human rights concerns more generally parallels Indigenous examples, from compensation to Japanese Canadians for World War II internment, to exoneration of the wrongfully convicted, such as Stephen Truscott, and the South African struggle for democracy. And if you have the new $10 bill, you'll see the image taken from archives of civil rights pioneer, Viola Desmond. UNESCO's Universal Declaration on Archives, which emerged among Quebec archivists, upholds these ideas about archives, democracy, and citizens' rights. Among medical examples is epigenetics, or how the genes of a fetus or young child are affected by adverse environmental conditions they can trigger health problems in later life. This was detected using archival research. For example, the birth slide, the birth ledger in this slide. New disease treatments have resulted. Among other medical examples, convent archives enabled breakthroughs in understanding Alzheimer's disease. Archives were also used to study the outbreak of the flu pandemic during the First World War, and in cancer, PTSD, diabetes, ophthalmology, and vaccine research. Leaving Earth, millions watched NASA's New Horizons spacecraft arrive at Pluto in 2015. But when launched, NASA did not know if it was targeted accurately enough. Mission astronomer Mark Bowie grew sufficiently worried that he went to the Lowell Observatory archives to examine early records of Pluto's orbit. The information ensured the successful flyby. Bowie says the archives, and I quote, has been phenomenally important to the mission. 
Back on Earth, archives are used to study a wide variety of environmental issues that affect us all, from hurricanes to oceanography, seismography, landslides, floods, geomagnetism, hazardous waste, volcanoes, and animal populations. Climate change research using repeat photography is especially noteworthy. Canadian researchers, for example, compare century-old archival photographs of glaciers in the Rockies with recent ones of the same place to illustrate the glacier's dramatic reduction. Such photographs not only help show why scientists are convinced of climate change, but have also helped bring climate change into our day-to-day -day concerns. Day-to-day -day cultural life offers other examples. The popular TV drama Murdoch Mysteries was inspired by the historical novels of Maureen Jennings, which arose from her research at the Archives of Ontario. The recent flowering of historical fiction in Canada, often based on archival research, is exemplified by Lawrence Hill's novel, The Book of Negroes, which became a television miniseries. It was inspired by an 18th century British military document with that title. It contains the names of Blacks who fled the former 13 colonies after the American Revolution. Other Canadian literary icons, such as Margaret Atwood, also used archives to write major historical novels. Atwood says that archivists made possible her alias Grace. I note today but a few examples of how we are living archivally. We do so on knowledge archivists create in historicizing and contextualizing records, on selecting, representing, and preserving them. Their responses to the question about what to archive, why, and how emerge from that. The archives they thereby construct contribute fundamentally to the varied forms of knowledge that shape our lives. Thomas Simons sums this up well. I have not changed or wavered from the conclusion of the Commission on Canadian Studies that archives are the foundation of Canadian studies, but I've strengthened in this belief and indeed enlarged it to one that sees archives as the foundation for the advancement of knowledge in any subject. What of the future? Archives are woefully underfunded, little known and often misunderstood. This hamstrings archiving of now ubiquitous born digital records. Walter Isaacson, biographer of Leonardo da Vinci and Steve Jobs, remarks that about a quarter of da Vinci's five centuries old paper notebooks have survived, a survival rate still greater than architect of the digital age Jobs's 1990s digital records. Former Google executive Richard Witt says of digital technologies, our civilization stands at the brink of a golden era of near universal access to human knowledge and culture. And yet thanks as well to those very same innovative technologies, we run the risk of erasing not just that shining future, but seemingly the solid ground beneath our feet. So our looming collective loss extends far and wide. But we must still pursue that better future. Happily, the Royal Society has begun to do so with its 2014 report, The Future Now, Canada's Libraries, Archives, and Public Memory. Thank you.